Hello, you beautiful human. This is the 187 Said Podcast, and I'm 187. The 187 Said Podcast is a podcast for men, those who identify as men, and those that care for them. I'm producing this podcast to normalize the conversation around many of the topics that have an impact on men. If you're finding the episodes helpful, then feel free to support me by sharing the podcast, talking about the subject, or even getting in contact with me and letting me know what subjects I should cover. But also, if you have a lived experience that you think is important to talk about, or something you'd like to share, all of my contact details are in the show notes. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the 187Z podcast. Today we're going to look at parental fraud. Um, we've been graced with the presence of a gentleman who has a lived experience and a lot of experience to share with you. And if this episode resonates with you or a friend, make sure you listen to the end and then look at the show notes for more information. Could you tell me what for the listeners i suppose what paternity fraud is what what's okay so uh, 18 thank you for inviting me on um I'm, I'm delighted to speak to you today um so what paternity fraud is is when a man is told that a baby is his child is, a woman so he gets a, a woman is maybe his girlfriend or his wife or maybe even somebody casual so the woman will say, you're the father, she's pregnant, you're the father of the child. Yet it turns out, at a later point, you find out that you're not the father. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, I believe that it's virtually impossible for a woman, a, a woman will, will always know for 100% who the father is, or at least, if, if she's been with multiple men at the same time, have a doubt I don't. I don't buy this um, notion that a woman can can actually get it. That can get it. Uh, can get it wrong. I don't. I don't. I don't believe they can. So, um, yes, it's it's really it's when you've been told that you're the father to the, to a child, and then you find out mm -hmm. either by the woman or you've done a DNA test that you are not the father. So you've been tricked, fooled into believing that you're a father. That's the best way I can describe it. Some people might call it misattributed paternity. Um, that's a that's a kind of way of putting it. But um, but in the Western world, we, we we use the word paternity fraud. Question I'd like to ask is: the men that you've spoken to, what have been the impacts to them, and also the the children that are involved? The, the uh, yeah, these first and foremost, the impact for a man. Every man, I mean, I've, I've been through this. I, I'm, I'm a victim of paternity fraud. The men that I've supported and the women that have rung up who, who have got partners who have, who have found out mm -hmm. that, that, you know, that these are like stepmothers, actually, that have ring up that said that, oh, the, the, the husband that they've married had a child from a previous relationship and found out that was paternity fraud. So um, the impact is colossal. Um, when I when I found out I was a victim of paternity fraud, um, I did did consider suicide. It was a very I'd very very strong. Uh, I didn't act on them, but I, I did have very strong um, suicidal thoughts. I, I think every man I could probably quite categorically state that I've helped has had some sort of form of suicide ideation after finding out depression, anger. Um, intense grief the the um the overwhelming feeling that men that men suffer when they find out the victim of paternity fraud is it's akin to bereavement but with a twisted element that the person you're grieving for is still alive it's a very very odd form of grief or bereavement and that's the best way i can describe it it's like a living bereavement you're grieving for somebody who's alive it's very 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 intense and it's i don't think i think for me personally i think for the other men that i'm helping i don't think they'll we'll ever be the same again i'm what three i'm nearly three years now since i found out my son isn't mine and i've had several 
court cases to deal with it, um, which I will talk about at a later point. I see, I see a child with a father in the street, and I think about my son straight away. I can see adverts, you know, with kids on the TV play, and I think about my son. Christmas is horrendous. I bury my head in work at Christmas. But no, the, every man that I've, that I've supported has had massive impact on their mental health and also trust issues as well, 18. Um, fine, I think we, I think that we can all quite categorically say, every one of us can state that we have a massive issue trusting people now. I'm interested in the idea that you've gone through all of this and all of the mm-hmm. emotional impact that you're talking about, suicide ideation and so on, has resulted in what happening after that, you know, after you, the day that you found out what happens, you know, 24 hours later and then on. Okay. So I, I can, I can, yeah, I can talk about that. So I found out I did, I did a DNA test. I had doubts. Um, the obvious doubt was 18 that he didn't look like me. It was, it was, a, yeah. it was, a, it was that there was a lot of few other things that she was saying that didn't add up. There was a slight thing with the dates as well that I didn't really read into the significance of the time. This is why I believe my ex-wife knew from the very beginning I wasn't the father. Um, But yeah, let's get back to that day. I felt like I'd been shot in the stomach. I felt like the the, the second I opened that email and it confirmed I'm not the father, um, I felt like I'd been shot in the stomach. I didn't eat for two weeks after it. I couldn't eat. I could drink water, but I couldn't eat. I think I lost about a stone and a bit in two weeks. Um, I couldn't sleep. I was angry. I was upset. Um, my family were in the same, my, my mother and father. It, it, my dad, who is a ex, ex-British Army soldier, burst into tears. I've never. He doesn't cry. I, th- I, I think I've seen him cry twice in his life. He cried that day. Um, my mother severely impacted by it as well. But me, I went through every emotion, anger, grief, loss, sick, you name it, I went through it. It was it was the worst day of my life opening that DNA test result. But the truth is better out. It really is. Something you've just mentioned that it's obvious you are devastated, but your father and your mother's devastating, uncle and aunties, yeah. cousins. Yeah it's not even a ripple effect it's a tsunami of emotion and grief based on we will we ever see this boy again it's almost that ultimate isolation you're grieving for exactly the same thing that your mum your dad your your siblings are cousins are and so on where do you go who do you speak to well what i found 18 was that when i that on that day i found out i wasn't the father it was a friday night actually friday afternoon so on the Monday, I, I started to look for support and I found absolutely nothing. There was um, solicitors that knew about a bit about paternity fraud. I couldn't really even find a specialist counsellor. I did find one in the end. I'll talk about that later. And I had to find out every bit of information that, about paternity fraud. I found it out myself. And that is, and that is why I've set up Paternity Fraud UK. So anybody listening to this, whether you're like me, a wronged father, you can be a wronged grandmother, grandfather, auntie, uncle, or if if you could be somebody who has found out your father isn't your father, you could be a, I of course from women, like I said earlier, that uh, their partners found out and they need help. If you've been affected by paternity fraud, do get in contact with me. I've, I've I've got the knowledge. I've got the I've, I've got the people. I have um, a paralegal that can assist you if you need to go to the family court. Um, I have I've now found a counsellor who um, does had does have experience in paternity fraud. Um, his name is Phil Mitchell that I can I can always um, signpost you to. He's fantastic. He's a really really good guy. Um, and also we've got a group set up. It's like a WhatsApp group where if you've been, a, when we've had the chat, we can we can um, we put you in the WhatsApp group and you can talk to other men about advice, constructive support. And this is what I, this is what I'd like to say to men: it's constructive support is what I offer. We listen. I listen to I listen to what's happened. 
And by the end of that call, you get a plan together to move you forward in life and and also to listen as well. Of some men, I mean, I've, I've, I remember one particular man, he kept it a secret for a year, didn't want to tell anybody, he told me. And we give you that opportunity to do that and you will get support. What I'd like to do is take a step back. So you found out and then that you got that effect that's, you know, impacted your family and all those people that love and support yeah. you, but those mm-hmm. people also love and support your son. What mm-hmm. What's the impact on your son, though? This is the thing. What? So um, what happened with him was um, she, my, my ex-partner's wife, what you want to call her, um, she wouldn't let me see him, but would let the rest of my family. So my mother carried on seeing him and then and then all of a sudden she said, well, yeah, you can see him. So I used to see him um, for a little bit. That carried on for about two months after two, what we, two yeah, two and a half months um, after um, we found out. And then, and then she ceased all cards. She wouldn't let me see him after a certain point. And then the rest of my family decided that if, if she won't let me see him, then we're not going to to go down that aunt, you know. But my mother carried on seeing him. And then about a year ago, um my ex partner's now stopped my mother from seeing him. So not no one in my family sees him anymore. So he's um got nobody, no father. So she's isolated him. You know, the psychological abuse that you've experienced, your son is therefore the victim of that as well. But what's her motivation? What did she say that she was hoping to achieve by this fraud? We ended up in the civil court with this case, and I will I'll come into that. Mm. Um, but her 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 um, defence, if you like, is that she just genuinely believed I was the father. And that is an utter, utter nonsense utter nonsense are, we, um, are you going to say I mean when you say that that's utter nonsense are you saying it on the basis that the fact that you're full of this grief and this anger or is it you, you've looked at it it's, it, it's evidence based you can just put on a paper and go look this is well, a candidate this is how I, I know I know that that's, that she she must have known that I wasn't the father because the dates the dates are wrong for a start only just but the wrong and she knew that. She knew that. She knew the dates. But notwithstanding those dates, that if she was, in, in my opinion, if she was, if she was um, with, well, it's obviously the, the DNA test has proved she was with another man. Uh, and she knew that, that that should have been disclosed to me. If she, if she would have said when she was, when she found out she was pregnant, or or even before the birth, really, you know, so none of us would have got attached. If she would have said, look. You could be the father, or it could be a another. I, I do know who the father is. I don't want to name him. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about him. But if she would have sold, it disclosed that bit of information to me. Then what I would have done was, is I would have said, okay, well, I, I will support you through the pregnancy. But we find, but we do a DNA test, day baby's born, and then we take it from there. But she didn't. She knew the dates were wrong. She concealed the fact that she was having an affair um and i i genuinely believe she knew from the moment she was pregnant that i wasn't the father i had no idea she was having an affair at the time none whatsoever there was no clues i just none whatsoever so in my in my mind it was there could only be one father and that's me right okay so she and it, she'd have to admit that whilst you were in a relationship, she was seeing someone else and having unprotected sex and it became pregnant. She didn't yeah. have to admit all of these things. So she decides to conceal it Keep that. so that she yeah. doesn't have to admit that she's had an affair. And then, yeah. yeah. But it all, it all came out in the end. I mean, it, it was, I was about, it, it, the first doubt I had was the dates didn't seem a bit right, but, it was one of those things I thought, well, maybe I've got it wrong or maybe she's just made a mistake. And you know what I mean? And I, was, I, I just didn't pay much attention to it. I just thought she's not having an affair. No, no suspicion she was having an affair. Let's put it that way. So when she said she was pregnant, I was like, well, it's got to be me. Got to be me. 
so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't consider it. So the date anomaly was there, but I just, I just put it down in my head. I thought, oh, maybe I didn't hear her right, or she's got it wrong, or whatever. But then the next doubt came about when, when the child was about four months old, and I just, I just remarked. I said, he doesn't look like me. I remember looking at him, and I loved him so. I love him, still love him now. But I just remember thinking, he doesn't look like me, and I just put it down to he, he look, he looked more like his mother, which, which he does. He does, he does really does look like his mum. And then about a year later, um, there was a bit of a whispering campaign about her, and people and friends had spoke to me privately and said that she's. I'm, tr I'm trying to use uh, nice, friendly words here for YouTube. She's highly promiscuous, and a few people said, "We don't think you're the father." I challenged her on that, and I said, "Look, people are saying this," and she said, "You are the father. You can't be anybody else's." And um, she was quite firm with that. And then about six months later, I did I did like a photograph of, of my son. He was playing with my car. And this glance that I got, when I looked at the photo, he didn't look like my ex. And he didn't look like me. And that's that was the, the final straw that broke the camel's back. And I went, I've got to get a DNA test now. Um, and I, was, I wasn't working at the time. It was during the pandemic. And I... Order the DNA test. I had to save up for it. When you're on Universal Credit at the time, it was it, hundred pounds a lot of money. It was like, oh, right. Um, so I two months later did the test, and, and it, do you know what? Eighteen in my head, I thought I'm putting two two together here and getting five. Because I, I you know, if you think about it, just be, you know, a child can look more like the mother than the father. It's it looks alone isn't enough. But I thought, you know what, this will just settle my mind. It, this is just going to put everything at ease. I'm going to be okay. It's going to come back his mind and I'll file it away. I won't even tell her I've done it and, and, and whatever else. No, it didn't get it didn't end like that. Like I said earlier, I felt like I'd been shot in the stomach. I was tearful. I, I was. I went through every emotion that night. It sounds like you kind of knew he wasn't yours biologically, but you wanted somebody to tell you, you're an idiot you got it wrong but yeah. you, you know i freaking knew it yeah i think in my in my case because obviously the, the, the other men that have that help are different and I, I and i can talk about those cases as long as i don't name them yeah. um in my case looking looking at it now rationally three years on it is going to be this year i i think i, I had a suspicion right from the beginning mm. so in, in my mind it was um it was there and unfortunately any benefit of the doubt I gave to her, the date anomaly, um, the fact that baby looks more like her than me. Well, obviously he's not mine, but yeah, the, the look, the way he looked, I thought, oh yeah, it just looks more like his mum. But yeah, I think I think in my case, um, yeah, I had I had doubts from, and, and and they would pass though those doubts eighteen as well. I can't say every day I was sat there thinking, is he mine? You know, it was it was just little. Little niggling doubts that 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 kept creep, that kept creeping in, and it was disturbing my peace, disturbing my peace of mind. And did the test. I had a normal relationship with him, so if you like, adopt him. As far as I was concerned, it was ours. Um, she had other ideas. So on discovering it, did it, did you break up immediately? Was it the end of the week? Right, that's it. Pack my bags. I'm out. Or? Oh, sorry. We actually, we actually broke up when. Um, when the child was six months old, I left. I carried on. I carried on being dad. So I, I was seeing him. I was ringing him up every day. I was. Um, he was staying with me one or two nights a week, taking him to the. It, it, I was going round to see him most days. It was. It was. It was as if we were still living together. But I was there so much with him. You know, I was a hands-on father. Uh, I took it. Was you know, I, lo I, I love him. I still do. It was a full, full-on, full, full father-son relationship. I took I took my responsibilities very seriously, and my love for him was genuine. It wasn't to be. And so yeah, so you already split up, and of course the the relationship mm. he, your son has with other members of your family has deteriorated to nothing. It's gone to nothing now. Yeah, and uh, in similar situations, what sort of impacts are there on children, but also children who are then become adults that realise their father's not their father? Yeah, no, no sorry, yeah, nobody's rung me up with that as an adult. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to happen one day. And I would like to speak to them, by the way, if anyone's listening to this. 
I do know someone that did happen to, though. This was way before my case happened. And I think this lady, she was in her 50s, and, and then she found out that her dad wasn't hers. She took it very badly. That's that's the only first-hand case that I know about that one. But um, to me, this to, to me the biggest victim here is, and I want to get this put across for anybody listening, is... Yeah, I am a victim of paternity fraud, and it and it's damaged me, and it's dam- it's damaged me permanently, and the men it's happened to. But the children involved in the middle of this are the biggest victims. It is them who have to carry this. It's like it's like my little boy now. He's now effectively fatherless. He didn't. It, I didn't want it to be. I was happy to adopt him, a de facto adoption, if you know what I mean. So, but. They're the biggest victims out of all of it, and I really, really feel sorry for the kids that get get involved, that get stuck, up, get caught up in paternity fraud. And mm. at least with my, my case, child, the child was very, very young; he was two um, when this came out. So the, the chances are now that he won't remember me. He'll have no memory of me by now. That young, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've not seen him now for a long time. She won't let me see him, but. Um, I would have loved to. I, I love him. I wanted to. Uh, to me, I wanted to sort of say, well, my my proposal was a de facto adoption. Just leave it as it is, and we tell him when he's older that I'm that he's got two dads. That's what I wanted to do. This sounds also like a, a dumb question, but Go was on. wasn't there a, a sorry? Oh no, I've no, I've, I've I've received no apology. Um, I she she pretty much tried to blame me for it. Yeah, yes, that's true. She she pretty much tried to blame me for it, um, saying I wasn't paying her enough attention and this and that and whatever else. Um, I've had no apology. No, she's not shown an ounce of remorse. Uh, she doesn't, in her mind, or certainly what she's saying anyway. She she doesn't believe she's done anything wrong. She just she's just she's just using the, I didn't know, I didn't know. I've made a mistake. She didn't. She knew from the very moment she was pregnant I wasn't the father. You were saying that you've had some civil cases. The paternity fraud, believe it or not, people listening to this, it is actually a criminal offence. Oh, okay. It is. It is a, it is a criminal offence to commit paternity fraud. People don't think it is, but it actually is. However, I, ca- I can't find many cases. There has been Women have been jailed for paternity fraud in the United Kingdom. There isn't many, but it has ha- it does happen. But in a criminal case, you have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. OK, and it's the, the, the evidence threshold in a criminal is very, very, very high. And it's exceedingly rare that a woman could get jailed. in the. But it, it has happened. I could send you two stories if you want me to independently yeah, so you yeah. can have a read of. Yeah. So mainly what men do is to, to get um, any type of justice, if you like, is through the civil court, and it's the tort of deceit, which is exactly, it's fraud, it's exactly the same elements as fraud, but it, you've got to prove it on the balance of probabilities. So I brought a case, now I couldn't afford a solicitor, so I, I went in as a litigant in person. Judge that I had, he decided there wasn't enough evidence to proceed. And one of his remarks was, and this is burned in my mind this is that your ex-partner just because she had sexual intercourse with another man she did she she may have not known that she may have not known he was the father didn't make any sense just that's what he said and i didn't have the money to appeal it the chances of me actually ever sort of recovering any money with this would have been slim so i decided just to accept the judgment and walk away from it and he said there was, you know, he didn't, he didn't clear it. He didn't, I don't know what more evidence I would have needed, eighteen to be frank. But there you go. He was very hostile. He was very hostile to me. Um, but that's. So when you say hostile, that, tell me what that looked like whilst you were there. Well, I mean, he knew he knew I was a litigant in person, and he and he was um, he was he was almost bullying me, very aggressive, very dismissive of my case, and, and any any evidence that I put forward to him, he was. He was almost advocating for it. He was really biased, in my opinion, and I, I didn't. I didn't have the money to carry it on. I mean, I could have appealed on that basis, but it would have cost me 
thousands. And again, the, the, ju- the judicial system in the UK, I believe, closed ranks. So I just would have just, I just thought, you know what, I'm not going to get anywhere with this. I disagreed with his reasoning. His reasoning didn't make sense to me. Just because she had sexual intercourse with another man did not mean she knew he was the father. Yet her case was, because me and her had, had activity, I was the father. It doesn't make sense. It, it, it didn't make any sense to me at all. Um, but there you go. One of the things that I, I, I've, I've noticed in regards to cases that get dropped or, you know, don't see its way through to justice or a conclusion. What tends to happen is they're quite exact. Well, I say exact, but based on we are here to argue this statement. And if that statement is not the right statement, we're not going to go around it. And it sounds like he didn't actually go, do you know what? Morally, this is not an OK situation. How did this come about? And explore it with the evidence and going, all right, the probability is she kind of did know. Mm-hmm. And it seems like you're judge was not going to entertain having a conversation and he, he, he was he was no he, he was he, he did say this is not a, this is not a court of morals <laughs> yes which is interesting that we kind of think in a processed way we all do as humans mm-hmm. and one of the things is that we make decisions based on our learning history and the way we see the world you know it could be that whatever's happened to this judge and he sees you and you're saying something and he's thinking I'm not having that because of his power or because of his position can say, right, no, get this out. Let's not discuss this anymore because it it emotionally hurts me or it will open up a tinderbox of stuff that I haven't been able to resolve. You know know something, 18, you just said something there that when I I spoke, obviously I've had support from my friends and I I, I talked about this, this hostile judge (laughs) and uh, one person, (laughs) she said, I'm, sorry, I'm laughing because it because it, it's just it, 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 one person said, "I bet you any money he's fathered a, 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 an illegitimate child." I, I, by the way, just for the legal thing, I'm not I'm not accusing him. It was just some it was speculation. He was very uncomfortable with this case. He really was, and I I I, I think there was something about this case that triggered off something in in him. He didn't want to go there. It was it was a very very odd surreal experience that that court case. I didn't I didn't I didn't think, I don't think the judges the judicial system in the criminal or civil side of things knows quite what to do with this. Well, well there's I mean I have this idea and of course it's an unqualified opinion. So mm. my idea or my feeling is that the law in itself the way it's kind of set out with this you know you know the process and so on actually works quite well. Well, in theory, but in practice, we throw human beings into it with all of their mess. And the the people who are victim to all of this is going to be those who put the applications in and pay their 260 quid to to get a court date. (laughs) (laughs) Those are the victims of it. And and also, again, again, the children and the adults that are involved. So for you, there is no civil remedy for you at all. Well, that that's that's been exhausted now. It 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 didn't go to a hearing. It didn't go to a trial, if you like. It, it was it was a step before there. I have to accept that. I accept it. I don't agree with it, but I accept it. And what what my focus now on is continuing the work that I'm doing, um, with supporting men and women who have been affected by paternity fraud in any way, shape, or form. I am also. This is something that the group we we are discussing is, is these two law changes we like. One of them we don't think will ever happen, but the, the, the most obvious one would be that for every live birth, there's a DNA test, DNA paternity test performed, so a man couldn't get on a birth certificate without that. That, to me, stops this problem dead in the water. Every man would know from the beginning that if he is the father or not, and if he is, if he finds out he isn't the father, then he can make then then obviously him and his partner could make a decision about whether he wants to be in, in that child's life or not. But he's not. No no man would be in that scenario that we'd like would be tricked into thinking that he's a father. The chances of that ever happening are pretty slim. But the other the other part of the, the law we'd like, we, I, I've sort of been thinking about since my case, a act of law called the Misattributed Paternity Act is what we'd like to look at bringing in. And, it's, and it'd be in cases like mine and the other men that I'm supporting, it would be less about proving fraud and focusing on the fact that there's been a misattributed paternity and then damages 
for emotional harm and distress paid to the wronged father. It's less about proving fraud, which it is to a high standard. You know, it's you have to really um, get quite a lot of evidence, even though we all know in our hearts morally and common sense tells you that a woman either knows who the father is or she might not know, but she shouldn't be named. She doesn't know who the father is. She shouldn't be naming people at random. And it's focusing on the actual misattributed paternity. That's what we that's that's how we, we'd like to do that. So what we're doing is we're writing letters to MPs. Uh, we're talking about it to many people. But also another thing, 18 as well, you know, anyone listening to this, this is about raising awareness about paternity fraud. Men need to understand, unfortunately, it happens. The stats show, Professor Mark Bellis did a study in 2004, the UK paternity fraud then was 4%. Doesn't sound a lot. 4% of live births in the UK, 4% of people in the UK have been told person A is the father, when in fact it's not, it's somebody else. Now, it, my calculation is that comes out at about 2, 2.4 million people. I'm doing that on top of my head. That's 2.4 million people have got have, have been told that, that the father's person A and it's not. But then, like we said earlier, it affects the wrong fathers. That's 2.4 million wrong fathers. That's 2.4 biological fathers who've got a child that they may or may not know they've got. And all the families in each one. So it's yeah. millions, millions of people. This paternity fraud effect. You were talking about getting on at the point of birth that a child should have DNA test. Yes. So that father can be on the birth certificate or not. There will be cases, however, where it wouldn't be safe to do so. You know, if the, if the mother decides to keep keep the child, that maybe need to be kept in mind. You know, in regards to children giving birth because that happens oh yeah i mean it, it, it would be where, where yeah. i'm proposing 18 is is when oh yeah i can think yeah ex- i agree you some of those examples yeah you couldn't do it you know the the mother might not like you said the child who does want to disclose who the father is or whatever or they but might it might it not would, be safe for them because for example yeah i've i've worked in criminal justice as well and met somebody who has been been in prison for a sexual offence mm-hmm. that resulted in a pregnancy and he's mm-hmm. saying well I, I now want to have a relationship with a child it's a bit of an issue in that respect his name's clearly not on a birth certificate had he been put on a birth certificate straight away he would then mm-hmm. have parental responsibility that could be worked through i agree there i mean that there, there's some examples you give there well i mean i'm talking gen- generally speaking yeah that you know when a child's born I'm, I'm proposing what I would like is that, again, generally speaking, I know there could be cases like you just mentioned where it wouldn't be appropriate, but for a man to get on a birth, for, for a man, it'd be for a man to get on to the birth certificate, a DNA test must be performed. Yeah. That's how I'd like it. So that you can't, a man can't get his name on that document until a court verified DNA test, which could be hospitals do them routinely. Yeah. Um, yeah. It could be done in hospitals. It's done. And then from that moment onwards, once the child's born, the, 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 the men know that they're the father. And if they found out they're not through a innocent mistake or whatever, then, then no men and children have to suffer through paternity fraud. It yeah. stops all that. I mean, I can certainly say for my case that if, if I would have found out that I wasn't the father, I would have walked away. I know I would have. But obviously, we, we all fell in love with him. I didn't have the choice, though. This is the thing. I didn't have that information. And I'm saying this gives men... The one, the certainty if they're the father or not. So if they're the father, brilliant. There's never going to be a paternity dispute. It's going to be all, that's fine. But if it turns out that the partner or wife has actually, it's it's another man's. That then that man's got a choice, and that's what that's 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 what I would ultimately love to happen. And and like you did, you did mention there is a few cases where there could be an issue with with safety. But I think generally speaking, it, yeah. it would, it's the best way to go. And, follow, and following up with that, like I mentioned, is looking at the law change. So a civil, I don't, I don't really want to criminalise people. You know, I'm not really looking for mothers to be locked up and jailed, and it's not, it's not what I'm about. Um, because if you think about it, if if it started becoming um, more prosecuted in the criminal courts, then the children again suffer because they've lost the dad and the mum. Yeah, it's not, it's not what, it's not, it's not what I want. I want a more civil court approach to this, where if a man does find out. That he's not the father, he can he can recover uh, emotional harm and distress um, compensation through the civil courts. 
that's that's the way that's the way I want to go with this. Underlying, is there an element of it more being about the acknowledgement of you tricked me? That's not okay. Yep, it is. It's a, it's it's about it is about justice. It's about I you know for men. I think a lot of us. I can certainly speak for a lot of men. We've been wronged, and we want this corrected. And it's and it's less about people get. Uh, a few obviously when men sort of first find out they want them lots up, they want their ex partners lots up and sent oh, yeah. to jail and whatever. But, but when but when when the emotions calm down, you 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 start you you know you think you think more clearly, and it's not a route I want to to see us going down is is criminalising mothers like that, um, especially if they've got babies. Not no, it's more about seeking justice through the civil civil justice system rather than the criminal courts. I pr- much prefer it in there than, than a criminal court. No. Yeah, no, I see. The child, child suffers the most. Yeah. So, the, yeah, so the the victim is, I mean, it's, it's, it's clearly not a victim as far as there's so many victims involved in just oh, this, one decision. You know, it's, mm. it's it, that. You've got, you've yeah. got, Matt, you've got the, the wrong father and, the, and their family. Then you've got the biological father and their family. And then you've got even, even the mother's family. But ultimately, the biggest victim is the child. Yeah. As adults, I can, I've, I've, I'm suffering. I've been through um, grief, bereavement, which I still suffer to this day. But as an as an adult, I can rationalise it. A young child can't. Yeah. And the damage to that child, potentially, if not dealt with right, is colossal. Yeah, I can imagine. So. On your books at the moment, I say books, but the people that you've spoken to, the people that be in contact with you, um, what sort? I know you were saying that you give sort of um, sort of mentoring or kind of support mm. to them, but what support is there for somebody who's had to go through? You know, they need to speak to someone that's you know a professional or something like that. What what sort of things are available? Or right, there's no there's, at the moment eighteen. There's no. Sort of one. Well, there is now. I've set it up. Turn it fraud UK. We're, we're a one-stop shop. So um, there was nothing specific out there for turn it fraud victims until until I came along. Um, so now, with us, you get you get everything under one house. So um, I I um, speak to people. I, I've had lengthy phone calls going for hours and hours and hours. International calls. People in Australia. Um, I've supported. A um, a couple in Australia so we talk we find out everything that's gone on and then after that call uh, at the end of that call I draw up a constructive and this is what I want to say to men that do if they do contact me after this if you find out you've it's, it's, it's constructive support we get you a plan together to move your life forward hmm. so what, what we do is so you get the opportunity to tell your story because some men have never have kept it quiet if they're so embarrassed and they've talked to another man, which is brilliant. So you get my support. I'll put you in a group if you want to, that is, where you can speak to other men. If you've got a, any legal issues, um, I can sign post you to a paralegal or um, I can sign post you to a solicitor. It, again, it tends to be people that use paralegal support. If you're on a lower income, um, it's, it's cheaper. Um, but she's the lady that 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 I will uh, that I send them to is fantastic. She's le- legally qualified, uh, but she's not a solicitor. But she can certainly help you through any any um, getting your name removed off the birth certificate and things like that. Um, if you need, if if a man was to ring up or a woman um, who is quite psychologically damaged to the point where they need counselling. Then I signpost them to a wonderful counsellor in in uh, based in Leeds uh, called Phil Mitchell. He he has got ex- experience with paternity fraud. Um, he's been helping me as well. Um, you, like I said earlier, this is the the only place where you get every bit of information in one place. Mm. It's not all over. It's not like. Before then, I had to go to different people and join the dots. Mm. So I brought it all in. It's in one place. Everything we speak about is confidential, so I don't start talking about um, you, cases on Twitter. You know, what I mean? I don't, I'll never name anyone. It is confidential. Um, I've had some. I've had some real, real horror stories um, come through to me. 
Um, I have got permission. Obviously, I can't name anybody, but I've got permission to talk about some of them, yeah. which I don't mind doing now. Um, one gentleman that I'm thinking of, um, his partner told him she was pregnant. He had a little bit of a doubt because it, it didn't quite add up. So she, she, um, are you ready for this one? She got a fake paternity test done. So she took a sample of him. It was a prenatal one as well. Took a sample of him, sent it, sent it off, came back. He's the father. He didn't know it was fake, but she did. And then two years later, her conscience got the better of her and she admitted it. So wow. he formed a relationship, thought the child was his. He had no doubt that he, he was relying on that DNA test, totally relying on it. He had no doubt, and then it, she, her, her conscience got the better of her, and she admitted it. He is absolutely devastated. Unbelievable, the length some people go. Um, another case that I'm thinking of, this is... This is, this is um, I, I, I find this one quite upsetting, this one. They all, they all upset me, but some upset me more than others. And he was... Um, he found out when the child was seven wasn't his. And he, he's, he's, him and his partner had split up, and there was a bit of a, a little battle with, with custody. And she just blurted it out and said... What, he, he had two children. He said, the oldest one... I'm trying not to name any names, I've got to try and filter it out. The oldest child is not yours. So they did a DNA test and he found out she was right. Yeah. She just blurted it out. So for seven years, he was, he was raising this this child. And then he had no suspicions whatsoever, by the way. You know, like with mine, I had a few suspicions. Yeah. He didn't have any. He got the shock of his life that day. And he's still suffering now. Mm. I've got men where it's multiple children. So not just one, multiple, multiple. Um, another one, another two cases have involved where they've been tricked into thinking that they're the father and it turns out, they found out years later and it turns out the biological father was just about to go in prison at the time of, at the time of conception. So the, the, the mother's chosen these men that I'm supporting to be their father, they found out years later. Two or two prison ones, actually. Two I've got. Wow. Unbelievable. Multiple men. There's, there's some like mine where it's they found out very young and they, and they had a little suspicion and, and whatever else. And they're all as traumatic as each other. Yeah. But some some are just, some like the fake DNA test and the man that found out when the child was seven, just the mother blurted it out to him. She was right. Did it did. It's disgusting. Is, and it goes back to what you were saying, that it, it, more often than not, mum knows. Yeah, but 18, it's my belief that, that, that a woman will know for 100% who the father is, or if she has been sleeping with multiple men, then she doesn't know who the father is. So in the first case scenario, she knows who the father is and she's damn right lying. But which I think is, the, again, it's all belief here, but it's, I think the majority are like that. Or B, if they have been, if they have been um, with multiple men at the same time, to find out they're pregnant. I think what they do is, is they pick the man who's got the best survival chances for the child. They'll pick the one who's got more money. They'll pick the one who's got a better job. They'll pick the one who, um, or even potentially, if it's if it's the husband, they'll just they'll just say, oh, it's you, because yeah. they're already in a relationship. They're worried that the man who they've been seeing on the side is not um, is not going to stick around. Mm. But either, in either of those scenarios where it's they either know for 100% or they don't know, it needs to be disclosed. If so, buts about it. I, I, I've wrapped my brains thinking, is how could a woman innocently not know who the father is? And I can't really think of many situations. Yeah. I know it would be interesting to hear from people in that situation who genuinely didn't know who the father was, you know, well, and, and what it. circumstances were, you know, but then well, I just, I just, if you were unsure, you'd say, I'm actually unsure. Yeah, that's it. You know, to yeah. me, if a woman's unsure, 
so she, we've got to put ourselves in the woman's position now, haven't we? So, so okay, so she's she's on she's pregnant, wants to keep the baby, but she's unsure who the father is. Okay, what is stopping a woman telling the fathers that she's pregnant, but she's not sure who the father is? What is stopping her doing that instead of say instead of her picking the man with the more money, the man with the you know what's stopping them? In either scenario, it's wrong. Yeah. It's wrong for just to name somebody that. Oh well, I think you're the father, and and I hope and pray it is. No, either way, it's wrong. You kind of talked about a couple of cases, your own, your personal case, and mm -hmm. obviously, if you don't know, you don't know, and it will come out in the end, or it sometimes it doesn't. What if a listener is in the position where everything's kind of resonated with them? They've looked at their child and thought, "Hold on a moment, something's not okay," and they've got this gut feeling that's happened a few times throughout the year somebody's mentioned something what can they do to ascertain the truth i'm of the opinion that the truth will set you free no matter how painful it is no matter how you don't want to know or may know or not know the truth is always better out the question you said is what harm could come from it i can't give any guarantees to, to anybody that, you know, if, if, if a man had a doubt like mine, how it's going to go after it, because you've got the mother mm. to consider. And unfortunately, in, in the United Kingdom and from the most the rest of the Western world, that men's rights, we're, we're, we're bottom, of the, bottom of the ladder with that. I would say to anybody that's got a doubt, if, if anybody's listening to this and they've got a doubt, have a chat with me first and we can go through it all together about all the, the avenues and possibilities. I would state, though, if you do have a doubt, even statistically speaking, I think the men with doubts, it comes about 30% out not theirs. So 70% chance is still yours, even with a doubt. But what I can't say is that the fallout, it's so unpredictable. Some women do, are okay, and will let you carry carry on seeing baby and you can or child and you become a stepfather. Some don't. Some will just... The, 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 that, and I think it's shame... I think that you found out something about them and, and it's the shame and, and they want you out of the life. So I can't, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, it'll be all sunshine, lollipops and rainbows if, if you do your DNA test and find out the truth. But I still think if you have a doubt, it is best to test it. What does it, having a test look like? Right, so you've, you've got two options. You've got the, you've got the, the DNA at home test and you've got a court, very, uh, a court approved test. The home test... You, you, it's about £100. I would use a reputable company. There's a list that the government approved ones that have the highest standards. Okay. So, as anybody thinking of doing this, do that. They're about 100 quid. So, you'll get two swabs, two, two cards. You write your name and the child's name on it, and you get a number. You have to write that on it. And then, so for yourself, you put a swab into your mouth and rub it all up and down. It tells you how to. And you put, you place the swab on the card and it turns the card a different colour you do the same for the child you send it off a few days later you'll get the result emailed to you court, court approved DNA test it, it's it's the same thing, it's a swab and a card but it's done by somebody else so they, they take a photo of you you have your ID um, it's a chain of a chain of custody so it's for verified so you've not, because the at home test is only you doing it, so it's not they don't, they're not accepted in court uh, but the court-approved ones are. I, w I, I would I would say if you do have a doubt, I I, I think the best the truth is best coming out. But I can't promise you yeah. what will happen after it. I can't I, I can't say. It, it it does depend on the mother. It does depend on the mother how she's going to react. Some some I mean I've, I've some cases that we that we're helping. Some of the mothers have been not no look you can still see the baby and everything else. Some don't. The, the, as soon as you find out they want you out of the life so ultimately mm. because you don't know what the fallout is would you recommend that somebody goes for a court approved one so yeah in the united kingdom if you're on the birth certificate and you got and you got parental responsibility you don't need the mother's permission you can do it without her knowing i would say if you've got the money and if you don't want the mother to know do the court approved one first but they're about 300 to 400 pound then if your money's a bit tight or it's, you, you, you know it's just a niggling doubt then go for the 100 pound one on approaching you to be part of this, this interview, I don't know, not being naive, you think, well, it's somebody just lying about who the dad is and trying to rebuild yourself after that. 
must be very very difficult i mean what what things does it stop you doing the, the single top issue that comes from uh, paternity fraud male paternity fraud victims like myself and the other people we're supporting is trust certain deep level of mistrust for people not just women uh, women in particular but i mean i wouldn't say just women but people in general you're always thinking is this person lying to me can i trust it, it, it's horrible that innocence that trust that you have for people has gone forever it's gone it's gone forever i'd say then the grief in in in, in, in part of that the, the bereavement is extremely traumatic. I have like, like for example, if I see a child, if I see a, a boy running around or w- with his dad or whatever, it makes me sad. Straight, I, I've been in tears. I've been in, I've been in a car when I'm working, and I, this happened not that long ago. When I was, I was in a car, and there was a level crossing, and the barriers came down. There was a, um, a man pushing a pram, and all I could, I, I just, all I could see was my son. It, it can get you. Christmas is hard. Men, have, certainly as well, building on with the trust, have found it difficult to form relationships after. Very difficult. Some, some have gone on and, and, and managed to overcome that. I'd say most don't. Most don't. Men have, some, one, one I'm thinking of in particular, become very isolated as well. And it's important that certainly what I do is try and keep in contact with them. Even if it's just, hi, how are you? Some isolate themselves off from the world and insulate. They feel so unsafe that they feel it's better just to be on their own and and, and recover. I've not gone down that. I, I've not. I, I did. It, I did at first when I found out for a few months, but I, I soon came out of it. I thought, no, I've done nothing wrong. Here. I've done nothing wrong. It's it's her, not me. And I, I soon, when I started telling my friends and 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 other people being open about it, I've got some great support of my friends and family. They're wonderful wonderful well the studies show that you know sort of men over 25 even if they are in a you know if they do have a family from 25 onwards their social network or their their support network diminishes as time goes by so you can get to 45 and 50 and have only have friends that you work with and this is something i've i did actually speak to um i had the opportunity what once i got paternity fraud uk up and running. Um, you may have heard of him, Carnell Smith. Um, he's the American um, campaigner against paternity fraud. Um, he's he's um, many video. If anybody, if any man's listening to this, and for yourself, eighteen, look him up on YouTube. Yeah, he does talks. I actually did a one to one with him. Uh, we had a chat between us, and he was amazing. He, he, he took three hours out of his schedule to speak to me. Because I was I was talking about what I'm doing and I wanted his advice and he's such a lovely guy and he said he said to me he he, he made a point of mentioning he said when you, when you're supporting men that have been through paternity fraud isolation you've got to make sure they don't isolate themselves he's lost a couple of men that he supported and he said he said to me he said please get this across to them about isolating themselves they can't isolate they've got to keep on going out if they go to the pub keep going to the pub. The hobbies don't sit at home on yeah. your own with this. Yeah, reach out for us. Reach out to you know anyone listening. Reach out to the to my support, and it's constructive support. It's it, it is all solution based, constructive, getting you out of this situation that you're in. See me like if your car's broke, you need a mechanic. If your plumbing's broke, you get order a plumber. If you suffer a paternity fraud. Come to me, please, right. if you're listening. Yeah. I don't charge a penny. My, my, at my time, I'll speak to you for as long as you want to. Uh, I don't. I do not charge a penny at all. I do this is purely voluntary. The other men that in my group that that will speak to you, we do it all voluntary. We all help each other out. It's absolutely free of charge. I'm not going to cost you a penny. We'll give you the advice. We can talk to you about birth certificates. If you do, if we do sign post you, know, I've got to make this very clear. If I do signpost you to a paralegal, or if we do signpost you to the to the um, psychotherapist, ca- the counsellor, they they're professional people. They're not part of us. They yeah. do charge, but that that but my all our bit with the support and the, the support group we do and my advice and my time is completely free of charge. This is my public service that I'm doing. How would um, listeners get in touch with you? I do have a website, and then within that website. 
there's like a contact me button. So the best way to get hold of me initially is email because I work full time. Yeah. So it's it's um it's better to email me than we can schedule the contact. So the website is www.paternityfraud.uk. I'll do that again for you. www.paternityfraud.uk. Within that, there's like a contact me button. Please email me first. It's the best way to do it, like you did, 18. It's the best way to do it. I will answer you with it as soon as I can. It may take me a day, perhaps. Then what we do is we're going to arrange a time to speak. The call, you, you, I'll just hand it over to you. If anybody's listening, say, right, tell me everything. Everything's in confidential. Nothing's going to go anywhere. And then at the end of that call, whether it takes an hour, whether it takes five hours, I've been on the calls for hours with, with, with people. Um, by the end of that call, we've got a constructive plan forward for you. And it's really lovely to know that that there, you know, there are experiences that that men are going through, you know, quite specific experiences that they probably feel that there's no one around to talk to. And I think just being able to talk means that there's a hope that yeah. tomorrow could be different. Men, men don't, mm. men don't, and it, and this is, and, but men don't talk. My my. My approach is, is what you're talking when you're talking to me. I've been through the whole system, and you're going to get some. You're going to get solutions, and you will get ongoing constructive support from me, from the other members of the group, all free of charge. You're not going to not going to cost you a penny. All, all we're focused on is helping you, and we all understand exactly how you all feel. If you're angry, when you out, we understand, we get it. If you're upset and you're tearful, we understand, we get it. You're not alone in this journey. This is such a valuable resource for people mm -hmm. at time of need in order to sustain it. At the moment, you are, you know, you're going to have to pay for the URL. You're paying for, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, for the website itself. The design of it, if you do it yourself, is still going to be time and your mm -hmm. time for calls and so on, as well as working full time. Do you accept donations or can somebody at, support at moment, you another way? At, at the moment, we don't, we don't, um, I've not got like a facility to to accept donations because yeah. at the moment we can we we're manageable. But I am I am aware that when it when it gets bigger, mm. and it will. Yeah, um, that's something we're going to look at potentially setting up as a charity. Also, it, within that group, there's there's other men there that that again they all know the law and everything and what what to do, what to say. So. If it got to the point where I was getting calls that I couldn't manage, then there is people in there um, that I can, that are willing to speak to you as well, like on a one-to-one -one basis, like I'm doing. So, you know, that that, that resources that we've, so we've got, I've got enough men that that can actually do the phone calls now. I mean, I, I predominantly do them all at the moment, but there is there is that facility there that when we expand that the other the other lads that can can do the phone the initial phone calls and get you into the group as well. And I could always ring you at a later point, but as it is, if you if you email me that the email on that uh, through that website, it'd be me you come through to. How do you look after yourself though? Because this is, I mean, I know for myself when I've working with male victims of domestic abuse, it's it's yeah, it's a drag. It's it, you know, so how... oh, it is. It's it, it's took me. I've had a lot of counselling. I've had a lot of support from the other the gentlemen in, in our group, and it's took me. What I'm now, it's nearly three years since I found out. Plus, there's a lot of stuff in that relationship that is mm. not relevant to what we're talking about today. But I am, I am, a, I am a victim of domestic abuse. Mm. I am. Paternity fraud is a is is a type of domestic abuse, undoubtedly. I had to, I had to figure out: can I forgive what's happened? And what I've decided to do is, is forgive the person, but not the act. Not what she's done. I'm not forgiving that what she's done. It's unforgivable, but I've, I've had to forgive that person, and that's that. That brought me some peace to this situation. I've got to forgive her because otherwise, I'm going to carry this bitterness around for the rest of my life, and it's going to disturb my peace. And I don't want that anymore. So I've forgiven the person, but I've not forgiven what she's done. It's unacceptable. I don't have anything to do with that person anymore. I don't see her. I have no contact with her. I don't want any contact with her. I don't want to see her ever again in the rest of my life. Mm. And that's how it's going to stay.
And my focus now is getting other other men and women that have been affected by paternity fraud through this mess. And, and I say to any man, don't be embarrassed by this. Yeah, you've done nothing wrong. This was done to you. you, you this you, these people, this woman did this to you. You didn't do this to yourself. You know, they knew what they were doing, and you didn't. And you're not responsible for what's happened to you. You believed a lie. And it's and it, and it's taken that embarrassment out. People go, oh no, people laugh at me. No one's laughed at me. No one's given me any funny comments. No one's been oh ha ha. No, quite the opposite. And you'll find that. Thank you very much. And make sure you're you look after yourself because you, it's a lot of heavy loading. Be. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, that, that's how I do. I do look after myself. I do, uh, like I said, I've, I've chosen to forgive. Hmm. That's helped me. I don't isolate myself anymore. I'm get. I, I do. I'm out there. I'm working full time. I'm working. Uh, I do go and visit my friends, socialising. I'm not. I'm not letting this. I, I will not let the actions of an evil person ruin my life. It's ruined part of my life. I admit that it has. I've been. I've been very distressed at one point, but I'm not letting this ruin my life. I'm gonna make sure now that I get on, and enjoy the rest of my life, but also I support other people at the that their worst part to get them through it. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm dedicating the rest of my life to now. Perfect. Yeah. Nice one. Thank you very much, mate. It's been amazing. You're very, very welcome. No worries. Really nice meeting you, 18. Yeah, we'll, we'll speak again soon, all right? Hopefully you found that information useful and a bit of an eye-opener. If you are a victim or potential victim of parental fraud then feel free to look at the show notes, take the details down and get in touch. You can speak to me first if you wish to, or all of my contact details are in the show notes. Thank you for listening to this episode. And wherever you listen to this podcast, please subscribe, like, or leave a comment. 